Welcome back everyone, Ronan here. We're going to talk about the characters a little bit, the classes in this game. Uh, I've read a bit online and I don't think I fully agree with what I saw. Plus on most of the forums I saw people were playing on easy, not normal or heroic. I don't think it's going to get you very far if you're only, if you're trying to play on higher difficulties. So I'm not going to talk about equipment too much because you can just unlock what you like. Um, but I'll just talk about classes. So maybe I'll just brush on these. And augmentation is from one of the expansions, I believe. I think you can get an option for, I think it's mutations. And it's from Anu, but I've not unlocked it yet. I've not ever been friends with Anu. This class, if you look at the symbols, actually, if you look at the symbols, you can see a line in between. It's kind of a half and half. Best example, this is a sniper. He's level six. He's not cross-classed yet. So that's the symbol for a sniper. This is a technician. That's the symbol for technician. A priest. Sniper. This is a heavy right here. I don't have infiltrator. I have a berserker right here. And that's it. I don't have an assaulter that's not cross-classed either. So this would be half the symbol of an assault. So this shows you, and it's important to note that in combat, if you know your symbols, so you know what you're fighting. I have not seen a single enemy that's cross-classed yet. What is good with this is it gives you a quick reference of what your class is while you're in combat or doing these. This is what a sniper would look like not cross-classed. What ends up happening at every class at level 4, you'll have this for new class. And by clicking this, it will give you a third row. So what you're looking for when you're building your characters in the beginning you're looking for those characters that will make a very good high-end fighter. Here, he has close quarter specialist, which is good for shotguns and melee weapons. Then you have quarterback, it's throwing grenades, and then farsighted. Now, for me, he's not a great sniper. I mean, these abilities, to me, don't go on a sniper. They go on an assaulter. So, he's not one of my priority like, strike squad. I don't want him to be in my end game for me personally. So you're looking at these when you're building your character. These stats are all going to be the same anyway, so it's not going to matter. So I'm going to go to a character that I might want to have in my end game. So this is a good example. This is my what I use as a scout. I, I he he's not really a scout. He's a berserker heavy, which is a pretty high end damage uh, class in the end game. What you want to have here though would be heavy weapon. He doesn't have a heavy weapon. So I made an exception. He's got cautious, which gives me more accuracy, but less damage dealt, which is not perfect. But because he had reckless as well, it does 30% bonus damage, but less accuracy. What ends up happening, I really get 20% more accuracy, 20% more damage. So it, it kind of works out. And then resourcefulness, carry weight, which I don't need carry weight. His right now is 40. I could deck him out in heavy armor, but I, want, I still want him to move. Like just because I can carry double when I'm actually load out on him, I'm not gonna get better movement speed out of it. You only get a loss of movement speed if you're over that 40 weight capacity. At some point he was carrying more weight, but the gun he's using has no ammo. What you'd be looking for is maybe having an assault character, assault heavy, like this guy, with shotguns. Cause then you can fire five times the shots and you'd be up close. You want this kind of character uh, with a shotgun. Uh, Bombardier, I made this class more of an explosive tech. It, it's pretty, this class is pretty crazy in combat. I'll try to show you what you can do with it, but it, it, it does a lot of damage. I don't even use Rage Burst on him. Keep an eye out in the beginning. Find your characters that have these uh, hidden abilities, I call them, or not created equal. And this is what you're focusing on when you build your characters. So. Each class has something that is amazing to its class. And this is why you want diversity. You don't want just that one soldier, every saying uh, assault heavy or berserker heavy is your go-to. No, heavy is a really good go-to, but it's only for like one point, two points. Let's go on to heavy. Um, but I really like this. Like these two are game changing for a technician. Being able to just throw your turret and the turrets are strong in this game. This is my favorite class. And I'd argue, yes, it has less damage output than a heavy, 
but it's got a lot more utility and way better abilities to help you in your game. This is your medic, essentially. Priest, I said I would go to a heavy. So, if you're on a heavy, and you're using this as a secondary class, it's kind of useless to you up until seven. Sure, you'll get Inspire, which is one will point to all of your allies when you kill something. Great. But you're not going to use Boom Blast, probably. I think you might to throw a grenade. But it's, you know, it's going to be a high willpower cost. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Warcry is useful, so I may eat my words here. Brawler, I rarely hit stuff. Melee. It might be good on, on this class if you can have a good melee weapon, but... And you still have to be right up there with them. Because of the SP cost, this is 50. So if you get to level 4, and you're like, oh, I'm going to cross class right away, you get no benefit right away. You get this. Being able to use heavy weapons, mounted weapons, and jetpack. You're not going to want that on this class. Jetpack uses 3 action points and 2 willpower to use. Then your character's just sitting there doing nothing. Like, it's not... It's not advised, or I don't advise it. Um, you're not gonna wanna waste points. This is only 10, sure. 15, this one is pretty handy. Warcry is very handy in combat. Uh, I'll talk about that in the combat video. Uh, Boom Blast is great because you can reduce the uh, AP cost by one. You can throw like essentially four grenades in one turn if you have enough on you. Technically three because you have to take one out of your backpack. Inspire, and then what you really want is Rage Burst. But this is a lot of SP. Unless you're adding SP from your, your crew pool, like your, your squad pool, this is for everyone to use. It's like a bank. This is his individual one. And you get 10 per fight. And this, you get about six, I think, per fight. Some quests give you, reward you with some. Uh, I think I did a quest which gave me 150, which was able to raise one of my soldiers that had been sitting in a base and leveled to seven. It helped him get up to speed. So what I would also focus on when you're leveling, speed is your friend. You want enough willpower so your soldier doesn't panic in case something bad happens, and you need to be able to use abilities. So my rule of thumb is to have about eight. Let's say <clears throat> that's kind of my number. It depends on the class. You want to be able to have enough to do two abilities, let's say in one turn, if it's going to help you overthrow that wave, or maybe two turns in a row, you do something. You get willpower from killing enemies at the same time, and some classes regenerate some uh, throughout the fight. So it's important to be able to reach your target. So you want the speed, and then you want to reach, you want to be able to do stuff. So dash, like Rage Burst costs five. It doesn't tell you here. It doesn't tell you what it costs. Uh, Warcry costs three. So all these abilities cost will point. It's like your mana. You want to be to be able to you want to be able to have enough to cast that and not panic on the next turn. Usually, I like to have two and a half what the main skill on that class uses. So if it's Warcry, I'd want to have at least seven or eight. Because I know I won't use Warcry twice in one round, but I might dash. So with this class, I think dash costs four plus a Warcry because that could change the fight drastically mid-fight. To have somebody just run in with dash, which does three times more movement speed with one AP and four will. I think it's four. Then three, so that's gonna cost me seven. He wouldn't be able to do that. So I'd wanna have at least eight, so that on the next turn, he doesn't freak out and panic and he's useless for two turns. Like he's gonna run away, then he's gonna recover. He may be able to do all that in one turn, but then he might die because he's in the front line or something. So you want, that's what you want when you try to factor in your willpower in the beginning of the game. The rest, speed. Speed all day. Strength is only for his equipment. So if you're noticing, I can't carry anything with this character. You like If I want to put an extra med kit, I'm overweight. You just want to start the fight without being overweight. That's, that's what strength is for in the beginning. Yes, it gives you more HP. It gives you 10 HP per, but that's more of a later end game thing once you have most of the skills you want to unlock with that character. I suggest to experiment. Because of these skills, you might find a soldier 
to be way better at something that you didn't think about that the combo just works really well for you. I like to have a lot of Assault. Assault has dash, which makes you uh, a lot more mobile, which is nice. Assaults also uh, return fire, so you have to be careful because the enemies return fire on you. If you don't notice that this is the class you're fighting, I would suggest shooting their arm off or something with a sniper rifle. They are a very annoying class, and often enough they can turn around and shoot you and kill you in one turn. So, Ready for action is nice because then you can go into your inventory in mid-combat things and moving things around. Let's say you need that extra grenade right now, you, or med kit. But if you don't have this class, it's gonna cost you an extra AP. Having this ability removes that. Um, what else is good in this? Rally the troops, I use it rarely. It's very situational. Great if you have a large squad, you use somebody to give you one AP, but I, sometimes it just doesn't fit in the mix unless you use it twice. Most abilities cost two AP, so, or if not, you're using willpower to, 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 to do something, so. Rapid clearance can be really great. Uh, I use it on a lot of classes. So it's a very good class to, to give you more utility, more mobility, uh, and more power in general. But it depends, again, on this. Rage Burst is the main one. You attack five times your weapon. So this is great with a sniper, great with an assault, great with the heavies. All around, just this is a really good one to get and to look for if you're trying to get a character to do a lot of damage. You want somebody to be able to hit a lot of like a lot of damage with that's that's when you need to get this heavy subclass snipers get to mark for death this is important because if you make a sniper heavy and you have enough enough willpower you can mark for death and then do your rage burst which is really nice on the sniper which is what this class does because then you can pretty much kill a queen or anything you need in one turn like you'll do a ton of damage at least if you can't kill it You'll definitely disable something on them. Just be careful because it removes 50% of your accuracy. But on snipers, fully decked out with sniper gear, that's not a problem. This gives you a shield. I can't stress that enough for this class. Try to get a technician as soon as you can. Now, the only way you can cross class into one is if you're friendly with Jericho. If you're not friendly with Jericho... If you don't get to 50, I think. 50 is where you can unlock their, their classes. I found that in the end game, this is the only class that helps you against incoming grenades and explosives. If you get acid on you, this is the only counter for it. Acid is a pretty big problem in game. I find it's like a game breaking mechanic. You need this class this gives you 20 armor to each body part. So that's head, arm, arm, chest, leg, leg. So that's six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. So it gives you 120 armor for that character. If he's got acid covering him, which will take 10 armor damage per turn, it saves you from that. In the end game, the last fight, this character would use Inspire. It costs no AP and then I would just recover. It's the, it, he, he would get the same amount almost. Actually, this one would get more. So I could cast technically Inspire twice that round, which would give me 240 armor all around. If an incoming explosive were to happen on the group, that character would probably be, be fine. You want at least one of these guys in your team. I would suggest having two of these guys in your team. And you don't need Rage Burst with this guy. So you don't need to add him to a heavy because he's not going to be damaging. You can maybe get him a sniper rifle. He's going to sit way back, inspire, and just take some shots. This is the class you want. Um, it's also nice with the remote deployment. You throw your turret somewhere uh, away from you. Let's say you're behind cover. You, sh you throw the turret. You never have to expose yourself. Your turret dies. Big deal. You build a, no a new one. Your soldier didn't die. And the turrets are strong. Like... They don't take many hits, maybe one or two hits, but they dish out a lot. They can kill a siren in one turn. I've seen some like on the counter attack, they kill a siren. It's, it's amazing. Um, so yeah, just something to note when you're building your classes. Now I picked this, not for the last skill, not maybe for rally. You could be sitting there 
Oh, people could use an extra AP. Sure. Uh, ready for action. Load a new turret. What was nice is dash. The only reason I made him with an assault is dash. This would have been... <laughs> actually, yes. Had he started as an assault, he would have had shotguns. And then reckless. So he would have had 50% more damage with shotguns. So this with a heavy combo would have been devastating. Had he been an assault. This is the kind of soldier you're looking for. And the carry weight. Infiltrator. I do have a cross-class infiltrator. What I really like about this is this skill right here. Spider drone pack. You shoot three spider drones and they are good. I have to say, you can shoot them on rooftops. The spiders will move and they'll hit uh, the enemies. They'll actually do their best to hit as many enemies as possible. So it's just you're, you're not doing instant damage. You're going to have to wait for the enemy to move before it does their thing but it's a good way to set up an ambush by a door uh it, it, it's a game changer i still don't understand stealth in this game personally uh decoy is not that great it's not like mimic beacon and xcom uh surprise attack i mean maybe if i was moving fast enough so maybe if it was infiltrator and uh an assault so he can dash and hit like behind them i mean it's shock value so it may be worth investigating, I just never really used it. It could be good on Assaulter, so it depends on your class. And then Sneak Attack. I mean, this could be good. I don't know, maybe on a Sniper? I, I have no idea. I've not used that one. It could be really good. Your Sniper could be not spotted forever. Uh, what else is there to do? So these stats are really important, and they're cumulative. So if I have 15, it costs now, now it's 16. So it does cost a lot. Most of your points. This is why a combat veteran, someone that goes into fights, it's going to be way better than somebody that just sits at the base. Berserker, this is great. Adrenaline Rush costs only one. So if you're using a heavy weapon, this is why this with heavy is really good. But have a look at what you have here. Like, What if he's better with, with assault rifles? Like, You have to know these things. I could give him Reckless. He'd be even stronger. But he's a late bloomer. He came in the fight late. So he's my B team, Scout. I don't know why I use... Berserkers as scouts, because in my head, they only use pistols for the longest time. Because uh, Berserkers, yeah, that's the thing. Berserkers start with melee weapons and handguns. And melee weapons, unless you're going to kill the guy, you're not going to go stand next to him. So that's just the way I see it. But if I gave him Reckless, he would do more damage. Like 30% more damage with a melee weapon. I don't think you can miss with a melee weapon. And some of them are hit really hard. So I'm going to have to try that better. But yeah, it's kind of scary. So I think that covers all the classes, except for Priest. Uh, priests are really good. I like to have one per team. Uh, induced Panic is really nice. I don't think there's a range on that, as long as you see them. So if they're really far, but somebody sees them, it's like squad sight, you can Induce Panic. Mind Control, you have to be close. So this is good with an Assault where you can run in, Mind Control. But you have to have a lot of willpower. This would be the exception. Because when you mind control, it can cost anywhere from 1 to 11 to, to grab them. And then, depending on the target type, it needs, let's say, 2, 3, or 4 uh, will point to hold them every turn. So, essentially, you can mind control indefinitely on one target or a short, short term on multiple targets. But you need to boost that will. But at the same time, if you're not keeping up with the group, if you can't reach that target to mind control them, you need the speed. So just, just be mindful that this rule that I said, you know, two and a half, is probably not enough for a priest. And these, I haven't I haven't had this either. I guess it would be good on smaller maps, but near the end of the game, a lot of the important maps, there's just a ton, like it's just huge maps. So 10 is still pretty big. It's the same as mind control area, I think. Uh, but these guys can't shoot. And... They're only proficient with viral weapons, which I think, I can only think of one sniper rifle that's a viral weapon. I think it's, no, it's an assault rifle, and it's garbage. Like, to be honest, it's really bad. They can't aim with it. Maybe it's good on a class that is a very good shot, but, so I typically give him a sniper rifle, and this would be good if he can get to the seventh level to get the sniperist. He'd actually be um, a bit more useful, except minus four willpower, so that's bad for him, because it's, you know, a lot of the abilities rely on, on this. So he's got quarterback. So really what I do is throw grenades. You know, just load a few grenades. I use them to heal. They're good support equipment uh, that I have. or some of the builds. 
you want to have this arm on your technicians. This gives you eight med kits in the fight. Uh, you can use it to remove the mind fraggers, but at that point, I've been shooting with pistols anyway, so it's not a big deal. Um, healing stuff. So if you do have a vehicle or you know your turret stuff, this can heal them, prevents you from having to buy a new one or them from dying. I don't use vehicles; they take too much space in your in, in the ship. It takes three three soldiers worth of space. That's too much to me. Like. A vehicle is not that strong to counter three soldiers. Gear wise, you know, I really like these pants, 15% accuracy. I'd rather kill stuff fast than, and then risk getting hit and surviving. It happens that you get hit and die. Um, but you know, in most cases, there's some reloading happening. Yeah, armor, like there's a lot of, to talk about stats. One thing to note, this is a mutation uh, from the Anu. You cannot remove it. It's the same with if you have a bionic gear like this is a mutation you cannot remove these which makes me not like these because these pants minus two speed this character has a permanent minus two speed i can't boost it can't move it it sucks and then the chest minus two speed this character is slow and that's why he's got minus four speed to go with okay this is a unique machine gun you won't find it but this doesn't need any ammo uh, i have another assault rifle that's similar to this i haven't found a shotgun or sniper rifle that's unique uh, maybe through another quest chain, but um, that this is my scout technically. This is what I use for a scout. He's fast. This is plus three speed, plus two speed, and this is perception. So ten perception. Maybe there's something for better perception. Probably is. I can go in augmentation. You have choices here. Um, this is more of an infiltra infiltrator build. This is like it's funny because this is not a heavy chest piece, but it allows you to have heavy stuff. So. Especially with the heavy lifter. This is my favorite chest piece so far. This is the heavy chest piece, but you can't have um, mounted weapons to it. I want, I like this one because I, I can give somebody a, a spot for a mount. What do I have? I My snipers? I stopped carrying pistols after a while because I had the carry weight. Uh, what's his... his stats is only at 20. Anyway, so I had two different sniper rifles. Um, one is against the Pandora virus. Uh, this one does double damage to Pandora, but not, not enough to compare to other ones. Uh, and this is the best accurate sniper rifle. This one has the, the chest piece that boosts my carry weight. So this sniper actually has an AOE explosive on their back that costs 1 AP. Uh, this one is different. He's using the infiltrator gun. And I gave him a bunch of ammo because he shoots 3 rounds per turn. A lot of these stats, it's hard to take at face value. Now, this is the class that I'm pretty happy with. From what I saw online, everybody was saying, oh, you need heavy and assault or heavy and something just for rage burst. Well, no. This guy can shoot five explosives per turn. Actually, he can shoot more because of his abilities. But I have this, costs you nothing to shoot, uh, which is one of my favorite explosives. I think there's an upgraded version of it. I just don't have it yet. And actually, in one of my later games, I'm not sure if I have it unlocked yet. I just don't have it in this game file. I don't have it unlocked yet. Um, he's got a rocket launcher, so instead of the shotgun, which I don't ever use anymore, I don't have to get close. Uh, you use boom blast, so boom blast reduces the explosive by one, which means I'm not sure if it's a bug, but this costs you nothing to shoot, and then his grenade launcher costs you two instead. So. You can shoot two rounds. It'd be nice. Actually, I gave him this because of this ability. So that's probably why he's so strong. Because the grenade launcher would benefit from this. I shoot two rounds and the range is increased. So I can sit back and shoot a group of enemies. And I've learned how to use the explosives better. So you can kind of aim what wood body part going to destroy. Uh, if the enemies are grouped up, this guy... He doesn't have to say, he just sits at the base and just like lobs in, uh, lobs in grenades. It's expensive. This is an expensive class because one mag of this, let's see. Oh, I had one in my bag, in my bank. It cost me over a hundred materials and tech. This is not cheap. Like if I'm going to put this, so yeah, 110 and 16. This is an expensive class. Because you're just lobbing in grenades, two per turn, uh, more sometimes in some cases, because what ends up happening, if I have enough willpower, which he does, 
I use rapid clearance. If someone dies in that blast, let's say you, you're shooting a bunch of worms. Well, if you use this and this, so this is nine AP, I think, maybe even 10. I think it's 10 AP for that turn, or willpower, sorry, 10 willpower. Then I'm gonna shoot that AOE, and if something dies, I get a free grenade out of that. And then I can shoot again. And then if something else dies, I get another free grenade. And I keep shooting until I run out of grenades, really. And because he's an assaulter, I can reload for free. So reload for free. If I really run out of equipment, I can just put more back in. Like I can just, if I need something else to switch, just move this over. And now I have, you know, more, more ammunition, more, more damage going out. This is my highest AOE class. This is like a wizard in D&D, really. This is my mage. So it's something really interesting to think about, not just playing what one person tells you to play. That's part of the message in this guide. Play around with your classes. Do what you feel gives you a good class. It doesn't have to be just the one. There's a lot of combinations, and I think that's what makes the game good, is by not only having one soldier. If Sure, if everyone had Rage Barrage and could move to one target, guarantee a kill, sure, okay. But you need to think, if you're playing on higher difficulties, there's more enemies. You have to be defensive. You have to be able to, to have some strategy. Like, you won't be able to kill everyone in one turn. Often enough, like, you're facing 12, 14, 15, even probably more. There's a room last night. Like, so many enemies. You need to be able to... You know, think what build would work for this. I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about uh, for these classes. There's just a lot of variety, and that's what the beauty of this game is. Is the variety of what you can do with it. Uh, again, though, a lot of materials. You're gonna need a shitload of materials. So this is this is why you're gonna be spending your time just trading your food in for materials. You're going to be going from haven to haven, and I'd argue that maybe a fourth ship is needed. At this point, I have three fighting ships. So, Good luck. Enjoy the game. It is a good game. It is worth playing. Um, thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the combat video.